Hello, fourth grade, and welcome to lesson 10-3, multiply a fraction by a whole number using symbols. Let's go ahead and watch our short video lesson, and then we're going to jump into our notes and our guided practice on this together. How can you use symbols to multiply a whole number by a fraction? Think about this question during the lesson. Stanley makes ice cream sundaes. Today, Stanley made two ice cream sundaes. How much ice cream did Stanley use? Find two times three fourths. Stanley made two sundaes. How much ice cream did he use to make each sundae? He used three fourths pint in each sundae. You need to find how much ice cream Stanley used. What units will you use for the solution? Use pints for the solution. You can use structure when multiplying a fraction and a whole number. Here is one way to solve the problem. How can you write three-fourths as a multiple of one-fourth? Select your answer. All right, now this goes back to what we were talking about, unit fractions. So how do I write three-fourths as a multiple of one-fourth? So if it's three in the numerator, that means it's three times our unit fraction. Our unit fraction for three-fourths would be one-fourth. So three times one-fourth would be our multiplication for uh, making three-fourths using a unit fraction. You can write three times one-fourth. What does the associative property of multiplication allow you to do? Now remember, our associative property of multiplication tells us that we can change the grouping. So basically what you can do, instead of focusing on multiplying three times one fourth first, we can move those parentheses and move them around the two times the three instead and multiply our whole numbers first, then multiply afterwards by our fraction part. It allows you to change the grouping when multiplying numbers together. So you can write two times open parentheses, three times one fourth, close parentheses as open parentheses, two times three, close parentheses, times one fourth. Two times three equals six. Now multiply the whole number and the numerator. Six times one equals six. 2 times 3 fourths equals 6 fourths, which is 4 fourths plus 2 fourths, or 1 and 2 fourths. Here is another way to solve the problem. Multiply the whole number and the numerator. Why can you multiply the whole number 2 by the numerator 3? There are two groups with 3 1 fourths in each group. How can you write two groups of 3 of something using multiplication. You can write two groups of three as two times three. So there are two times three equals six one-fourths in all. Six-fourths equals four-fourths plus two-fourths, which equals one and two-fourths. Two times three-fourths equals six-fourths, or one and two-fourths. Stanley used one and two-fourths or one and one half pints of ice cream to make two sundaes. Now you know how to use the product of a fraction and a whole number to solve a problem. Great job. Okay, so now we saw a couple different ways that we can multiply a whole number times a fraction. We also saw how we can use the associative property to help us rewrite uh, an equation so that we're breaking apart a fraction into a multiple of a unit fraction and then re, uh, uh, regrouping or deciding to group our whole number parts together first to multiply and then go in and multiply our new whole number times whatever unit fraction we have remaining. So let's go ahead and take a look at our notes and our guided practice here. So 10-3, multiply a fraction by a whole number, use symbols. And the question we're focusing on is how can you use symbols to multiply a fraction by a whole number? 
Well, you can use drawings, you can use a bar diagram, you can use an area model, or you can use an equation to model all of these different ways. So our first question here, our example says, a recipe for one gallon of fruit punch needs three fourths cup of orange juice. How many cups of orange juice are needed for eight gallons of punch? Now I can write it over here. I've already annotated my question. I need to make one gallon. One gallon needs three fourths cup of juice. How much are we going to need for eight gallons? So I can use repeated addition and do that three fourths added together eight times. Or I can use multiplication and do eight times three fourths. Now, if I wanted to do it that way, I could do eight times three fourths, which basically tells me I'm going to multiply the eight times the three. And my answer is still going to stay over my same denominator of four. So eight times three is 24. So 24 fourths, we can rewrite this as, um, as a mixed number or a whole number. And we have to think how many groups of four are there in 24? Well, I know there's six groups of four in 24 because six times four is 24. So that gives me six whole cups. So I know that I need six cups of orange juice for eight gallons of fruit punch. Now we can also write that multiplication sentence as multiples of a unit fraction and use the associative property, just like we saw in the video. So eight times three fourths is the same thing as eight times three times one fourth. Using the associative property, I can move these parentheses around the eight times the three instead, and then multiply by my one fourth. So eight times three is 24. 24 times one fourth equals 24 fourths, which also gave us six whole. This way is easier because you're multiplying whatever you get when you multiply your whole number, you're going to put it over that unit fractions denominator. Let's take a look at another example. It says calculate three times three sixths. So I gave you guys multiple ways to do this. Three times three sixths, I can use repeated addition. Three six plus three six plus three six equals nine six. I'm going to rewrite this improper fraction as a mixed number. So nine six is the same thing as six six plus three six or one whole and three six. Or I can multiply it using the associative property. Three times three six is the same thing as saying three times the product of three times one six. Using my associative property, I'm going to move my parentheses around the three times the three instead. Three times three is nine times the one six, which gives me nine times one six or nine six, which again is one and three six. Or I could just multiply the whole number times the numerator, three times three over six, three times three is nine. So nine over six, which is the same thing as six sixths plus three sixths equals one and three sixths again. Let's look at another example here. It says calculate the total distance Mary runs in one week if she runs seven eighths miles each day. So stop and think, one week is seven days. She runs seven eighths of a mile each one of those days. Now to solve that, I'm going to do seven times because there's seven days in a week, seven times that seven eighth mile that she runs. Now I can multiply the numerators times each other, the numerator, sorry, times the whole number, and do seven times seven over that same denominator of eight, which is 49. And then I can think how many groups of eight are there in 49? Well, I know six times eight is 48. So that's six groups plus one more piece to make it 49. So six plus one eighth. Or I could use my associative property again and show it as a multiplication using a multiple of a unit fraction. So seven times seven eighths is the same thing as saying seven times the product over here of seven times one eighth. That's going to give us a seven eighths. I can move these parentheses off of the seven times one eighth and move them instead around the seven times seven and then multiply by one eighth. I know seven times seven is 49. 49 times 1 eighth will give me 49 eighths, which again, we already found out to be 6 and 1 eighth. So Mary runs 6 and 1 eighth miles in one week. Let's take a look at our guided practice. Our first question says, Sarah has one half of a granola bar. Her friend has five times as many granola bars. 
how many granola bars does her friend have? So she has five times as many. We're going to do five times what Sarah has, which is one half. So five times one half is the same thing as saying five halves. Five halves is the same thing as saying one whole plus another whole plus another half because two goes into five two times. Two times two is four plus one more piece left over. So her friend has two and a half granola bars. For number two, Sue needs five sixths cup of cocoa to make one batch of pudding. She wants to make four batches of pudding. Write and solve an equation to find out how many C cups of cocoa she needs for all four batches. So they've already provided us with the variable. They told us what our variable is going to be. It's C. We know that she needs, she wants to make four batches. So four times the number of cups of cocoa she needs for one batch, which is five six. So C is equal to four times five six, which is the same thing as saying four times five over that same denominator of six. We know four times five is 20. So 20 over six. 20 over six is the same thing as saying three whole. So six, six plus six, six plus six, six, because six times three is 18, plus two, six more to make it 20, which is the same thing over here we said as three and two, six. If we want to change that and simplify that fraction some more, since those are both even numbers, we can divide the numerator and denominator by two, which, is, which will tell us three and two, six is the same thing as three and one third. For number three, eight times one half. So eight times one is eight over two. We have to think how many groups of two are there in eight. And we know there's four groups of two and eight. So eight over two is the same thing as saying four whole. For three times three fourths, we're going to multiply the three times the three, which gives us nine over that same denominator of four. How many groups of four are there in nine? Well, we know there's two groups of four in nine because two times four is eight plus one extra piece. So one whole plus another whole plus another one fourth piece gives us two and one fourth pieces. For number five, we have five times three fourths is equal to M. So five times three over four because we're only multiplying the whole number times the numerator. Five times three equals four. Oh, sorry, five times three over four. So five times three is 15 over four. I have to think how many whole groups of four are there in 15? Well, I know there's three groups because three times four is 12 and four times four is 16. That would be too much. I can't do four groups. So I'll have three whole groups. So four fourths plus four fourths plus four fourths. That gives me 12 fourths plus another three fourths makes that 15 fourths. So that's three whole plus three fourths extra. So M is equal to three and three fourths. And the unit they were using in this question is fluid ounces. For number six, we have nine times two third equals R, which is the uh, how many yards of ribbon they're using for this question. So again, we're multiplying the whole number times the numerator and keeping the denominator the same. So nine times two is 18 over three, 18 over three. We know that 18 divides equally into three. There's six groups of three in 18. So it equals six yards of ribbon that are going to be used. That takes us to the end of this lesson. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, take care and have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.